What level is that? Not much. It's not very much at all. You can't do shit with just the name of a car. What's Ford divided by Chevy? <laughs> no. Right? So that's how you attack that. What, what's The level of measurement is related to the question I ask. It's related to the answers I get. So think about it. What I would have asked to get to what I'm writing. So some of you guys have stuff about hair color. Bam. Some of you guys have stuff about strongly agreed, disagreed. What level is that? Strongly, strong, what should be right after strongly agree? Agree, yeah, that's ordinal, yeah, there's a gimme. You're welcome, yes? In order to know or to identify the parameter of something, you have to know the question that's being asked in the survey, right? In order to know the parameter of something, you have to know the actual question that's being asked. No, not really. If I say 72% of all tea drinkers put lemon in their tea, right? And that's not me, don't be putting no lemon in my tea. Uh, let me say that again. Since two percent of all tea drinkers put lemon in their tea, is that a statistic or a parameter? Why? I said all. I mentioned the population. I described the population. What does a parameter do? Describes the population. Right. So if I said eight percent of the German shepherds I study uh, like milk bones, that's a statistic because it's describing a sample. That's it. You can see how to parse things. I know what statistic means, and I know what parameter means. What situation am I in? Don't worry, it's okay to get on. It is not even 8 o'clock in the morning yet. I understand. Yes? Yeah. So the whole question on the practice test? Yeah. I don't know how you wrote it on this one. Oh, okay. So we just did a problem like that. Well, watch this. Let's say here's the mean is 10. And let's say I'm at 14. And every step is... Uh, 1.5. Stay with me now. How many steps away from 10 is 14? So another way to say, how many standard deviations are there from the mean to that data point? How do you get that? Is it, how, if you, like, stay with me now. Every step is 1.5. So if I took two steps, where would I end up? Every step is 1.5. So if I took two steps, where would I end up? 13. So I know it's a little bit bigger than two. So that's not a bad guess. But how do I get it exactly? Yes? Would you minus, like, 10 through 14 and then yeah. divide the number? That's how far I've got to go. Because if it was, if this was two... That should be easy as shit. How many steps from 10 to 14 if every step is two? Two. Because how do I go four? I do two of these. Well, how do I go four now if everyone is 1.5? Well, how did you get two a second ago? You divided how far you had to go by how big each step was. Doesn't that tell you how many steps fit in to that distance? So if I take that minus that, divide it by 1.5. 2.6. 2.6? 6666666 What is that the formula for? What is the 14? It's just some data point. What's the 10? The mean. What's this 1.5? Standard deviation. That's the formula for z score. Because what's the z score tell you? The number of steps, the number of standard deviations from the mean to a data point. In fact, I'll tell you this. Probably not on this first test, but on every test after this first one, I'm going to ask you this question. This is what students always want from us teachers is, just tell me what you're going to ask. And here you go. 
right? And I get about 50% of people get this right, even though I tell you that I'm going to ask you this. I will ask you, what does a z-score tell you? That's it. I'm just going to ask you, what does a z-score tell you about a data point? Tells you how many standard deviations from the mean to the data point. That's all it tells you. That's its purpose in life. Is to give me a relative feel for how far away something is. Yeah, z score tells you, so you can say it a few different ways, but a z score tells you how many standard deviations from the mean to a data point. Yeah, because it's in prompt two, and I give you the mean and the standard deviation. Beautiful. So it'd be the data value, 136, minus the mean, 98, divided by the spread, 13. And that'll be the number of standard deviations. Yeah. I know it's going to be positive because it's above the mean. Yes? Say again? Well, when you calculate standard deviation, round to, round to three, de three decimal places, yeah, at least. Later this semester, we'll be rounding z-scores to two places just because we're going to use a chart that goes to two decimal places. Okay. So that'll be later. Now, again, if you guys haven't tried Section 2.7 homework out yet, then a lot of the questions that have happened so far are related to things in that section. So if you haven't done it yet, you're not connected to this shit at all. So of course it's not going to make immediate sense what I'm saying. But they are all in that section 2.7. The problems we did earlier, there's problems exactly like that in section 2.7. There's also a problem where hopefully by now you understand, I think the book says use a computer or a calculator to get the standard deviation. You know better than that. You know to make the table and do it, or else it just makes you redo the homework, so why do that? God, I'm so easy. Yes? Do we need a data, data link form? Say again? Do we need a data link form? Or data link form, what's that? Yeah. All right, you ready? Some of you guys have heard this before, because you've taken classes of mine before, but if you have a math teacher that needs a Scantron, they are not a math teacher. They are some horrible thing that needs to get the hell out of education. What's the most important thing about math that you do for a teacher is your work. Yeah. Scantron, my job could be so damn easy. Holy shit. And that's why teachers have such a bad name for a lot of people is because there are teachers who make the job. I could have such an easy job. I could just give you guys A's, uh, give you the practice test exactly like the real test, uh, do Scantron so I don't have to grade shit. Oh my God, my life could be easy. But it's this damn belief I have that makes me not do that shit. Damn it. It'd be all easy to. So yeah, I'm sorry. The short answer is no. Yes? Uh, on the practice test, 16, is that false? Oh, so what situation would the standard deviation be negative? What does a zero standard deviation mean? What does standard deviation mean by itself? What does standard deviation tell you? The spread. What would a zero standard deviation be? No spread. So it'd be the same number repeated. It never gets away from three, 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 three. The mean is three. <laughs> does it ever get away from three? No. So doesn't it make sense the standard deviation would be zero? And sure enough, if you make the column of x minus mu, it's going to be 3 minus 3 all the way down. It's turtles all the way down. So you're going to get 0, right? Does that make sense? So what the hell would negative spread mean? doesn't work. Mathematically, how do I get standard deviation? Don't I square stuff and then square root those? Could that ever come out negative? No. We know this. We, we should know this. When you square root something, can the answer come out negative? No. By definition, it can't. Maybe. You guys remember this? 
Right. Like how many, so if I said to you, what's the square roots of nine? What's the roots of nine? You would say three and negative three. Because there are two things that you square to get nine, aren't there? Negative three to nine. But when I have the symbol square root, that by definition is the positive root. So by definition, it can't come out negative. So yeah, so that, that one's a quick one. No. You can say it a few different ways. Zero means no spread. You can't go below that. Or you can say mathematically. Square roots can't come out negative. Done, Jeff. Next. Is that, is that cool? Okay. All right. Yes. Oh, sure. Okay. So number four, A. 30% of them were blonde. So what do you think of the question I was asking? Um, hey, okay, I love this. What 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 did you just say? Somebody said how many? I said well, how many? How many people, people were blonde? Beautiful. So in your explanation, you're going to say something about that because if if the question I asked was how many people in a room were blonde, then what level of measurement would that indicate? No, no, no. Let me see. Let me come back to this in a second. So what I really intended here was, the question was, what color hair does somebody have? Oh, but if you say how many ordinary... Beautiful. That's why I let you explain your answer. I don't think I said here to explain, but you know on the quiz I said explain. I'm almost going to say explain. I don't do that just to be mean. I mean, part of it is to be mean. But part of it is to give you a chance to explain your answer, because sometimes I will take different answers. So if your explanation is, well, you're counting how many blondes, so that would be ratio, because you could have twice as many blondes, right? So division makes sense. Beautiful. If you say you're asking about hair color, that's nominal, because that's just name of a type of hair color. Correct. I love it. Okay, maybe. Okay, moving on. Uh, the average temperature is 56 degrees, and you know if that means 56 degrees what? Probably. Could be Celsius. That would be really hot. Yeah, no, it's Fahrenheit. I'll put on the test, if I ask this question, I'll put Fahrenheit. It's definitely not Kelvin, because a lot of us don't know Kelvin. All right, somebody goes no Kelvin. So what is it about temperature? Is it, to be ratio, what's gotta be true about zero? What's got, for ratio, what's gotta be true about zero? If I write a zero down, that must mean what? What is zero supposed to mean? Zero. None of those things, or none of that, right? And a zero degrees mean none of what temperature is measuring. Can you get colder than zero? Mm -hmm. Yes. So therefore, zero doesn't mean what it's supposed to. So it can't be ratio. So it's got to be what? Because I know it's numerical. Can it be, twi can it be uh, 10 degrees cooler today than it was last Monday. In fact, maybe it is. I don't know. Right? So that means that what makes sense? 10 degrees cooler is what operation? Subtraction makes sense. So what level is that? Interval. So I knew going in, this is a number. I know it's not nominal or ordinal, but that's just name data. It's got to be interval or ratio. So how do I tell which one? Ratio zero is supposed to mean what it's supposed to mean, right? Zero should mean what it's supposed to mean. And zero, in this case, doesn't mean the absence of heat. So therefore, it can't be ratio. It must be interval, because subtraction makes sense. Uh, the average number of TVs is 3.7. And, and so what was it I was asking? How many TVs? How many TVs? So that's a number, right? So again, it can only be what two things? Interval or ratio? I like it. The subtraction makes sense. If I have four TVs and the guy next door to me has six, think about it. Six minus four is two. The guy next door has two more TVs. That makes physical sense. So it could be interval. Why is it more? Because the zero means what it's supposed to mean. If I write a zero down, that means that person has no TVs. Good. So it must be ratio. Ratio is when zero means what it should. And of course, if the guy next door had eight TVs and I have four TVs, he's got twice as many. I'm like, what the hell are you doing with eight TVs? Holy shit. Do we count phones as TVs nowadays? I don't know. 
few questions. You watch the Hulus on the on your phone from the internet. Yes. No. No. Sorry. And you're like, come on, man. Because you always have to answer with the highest level it is. Why was the other one two different possibilities? Because one person said they were counting how many people blonde, and the other person said it was hair colors. So I kind of left it a little bit open as to what they were really asking. That's why I would accept two different things. Here, I didn't leave it open to what they're asking. Number of TVs. It's got to be ratio. Yes. No, no. Careful, look, look. Some of you guys wrote down something like this. It's nominal because it's the number. Okay, that phrase makes no sense because nominal means name data. Nominal is the opposite of number. Nominal means not numerical at all. It's just the name. Right? There you go. So if you're saying hair color is the question, nominal. You're saying how many, that's numerical, and it's ratio for the reasons we talked about. Yeah. Okay, I like it. Do you see why I let you, I allow you to explain? Because sometimes I'll take an answer I wasn't expecting because you looked at it a certain way and your explanation tells me. What I'm looking for is you to connect the idea of a word with a situation. I don't ask you to define a word, I just want you to use it correctly. So if you look at a situation differently than I did and it matches, you got it. You understand? Yes? Say again, sorry. Maybe. I try not to answer anything specific about MA's quiz because everybody has different quiz. But what do you think is almost always going to be true when I say number of blank in blank? Number of means I'm counting. And if I'm counting things, division automatically makes sense. Because if I counted eight things, and over there I count 16 things, well, that's twice as many things. So almost any time I say number of blank. So what's, the ratio? what's the what now? Okay, okay, come on, come on. Nominal names. Ordinal is names that have an order they want to be in. So every ratio thing is also interval, is also ordinal, is also nominal. They build, and your answer is the highest. So nominal is the one that's got the least shit you can do with it. And then if you have names that want to be in order, that's not just nominal, it's ordinal, even though they're still names. And then if you have names that are, want to be in order, and subtraction makes sense, because they're not really just names, they're numbers. So like, 1972 could be my name in a way, because I was born in 72. That's that 72 guy, all right? I mean, you never hear anybody say that, but does, isn't that a situation? Like, uh, uh, like weight, who's that? That's that 300 pound guy, dude. Right? I mean, that's, right? That would be his name. You see what I'm saying? But it's more than that because it's actually a number. It's just more than that. So your answer's got to be the highest level you get to. Deep. I love you guys so much. Yes? Uh, on the practice test, it says create a situation instead of... Yeah. What? Like what's being asked? Like, Where was that one? Which was? Number five. Oh yeah, there it is. I knew it was at the bottom somewhere. Um, we talked about a couple, so you can actually—I didn't say you can't use any of that we already used. Oh shit! Good thing your teacher records as much. But let me remember: what's the situation? I want to use median instead of mean. If there's outliers, and what's the local example I gave, uh, like La Jolla? Home prices. Home prices. And there was a problem we did with actual numbers, CEOs versus the underlings. I think, okay, so the question is asking like, for a, a problem in which you would use? Yes. 
Yes. And you can even say like, it would be better used median on test grades if you had a few very extreme grades, because that would really throw the average off, right? So that's why I calculate both. So if I have a test and I get uh, 40 people get between a 70 and a 90, and then I get five people that get 20. The average is going to be lower than it really, not should be, but that average is not going to be really representative of what's going on. You can see. So it's really, in general, anytime there are outliers, the median will be more descriptive, more honest. So that's why home prices, because there's big outliers. Uh, uh, salaries, because there's, you know, big outliers, yeah. That was the true false, right? Yeah. The mean and the mode can never be the same. Is that true or false? Good. So uh, explain would be, give an example actually would be the best. It's like one, two, three. What was it, the mean mode or the mean, mean and, and mode? So one, two, two, three. <laughs> there you go. The mode is two, the mean is two, yay. Let me do this. I'm gonna give you guys the answer key for that. Uh, there's one problem, I think it's the box plot problem, I, I said I'll do it in class because I kind of ran out of room on paper. So we'll do that G, part G on number one, we'll do that together up on the board. Um, something you should not do that some of you guys are going to do anyway is this. Oh yeah, I would have done that. Right? You guys understand something? If you didn't try to practice test out at all, go look at this. I can't stop you. you some of you will, but you're gonna, what you're going to do is you're going to build up false confidence. I would have done that. Yeah, that's, that looks right. It's so easy to agree with work that's already done than it is to do it. Yeah, I like it. All right, here we go. Stay there, anybody? I have a bunch of quizzes. You guys in the last row, after class, I can print out another one real quick for you, okay? All right. Um, okay. So let's do 1G real quick, since it's not on the answer key. Um, How do I make a box plot? What goes into it? What I need to find? Actually, I think I tell you that, don't I? Yeah, I tell you. Find the five number summary. So that's what goes into it. And what is the five number summary? Low. Low? Highs. Q1. Q1. Q2. Q2. Q3. Q3. I like it. So you guys have the answer. You have the, the data in order there for you. What's the lowest number? 34? 29. 29? And what's the highest one? 63. 63? Okay. You have all the numbers in order there, right? Do you see them? 
in the in the table? You can help me out on this because I gave out all my stuff. Um, how do I find Q1? What do I do? Good. Q1 is the first quartile, so it's 25% of the way in. How big is my list? Good. So 25% of 15. What's a quarter of 15? What's a quarter of 16? Four. So a quarter of 15 is one quarter below 16. I mean, it's one quarter before four, so it's 3.75. Or just doing the calculus. What do I do when I get 3.75 here? Always push it up if it's not whole number. So what's the fourth number in your list? 40. 40? Okay, I'll go with that. And then Q2 is the same idea, except I'm going to take half of 15. Why am I doing 15? Because how many numbers there are? Beautiful, thank you. Some of you guys are like, why do you ask that dumb question? Some of you guys are like, oh, that's why he's got 15. So half of 15 is... 7.5. What's the eighth number? Eight. 45. 45. And then Q3, I actually showed your shortcut on Q3 before. 75% of 15, or you can just go four in from the top. If you guys remember that, Q1 and Q3 should be symmetric. Boogie week. So uh, three fourths of fifteen is whatever the shit it is, huh? Fifty-two. It's not fifty-two. I know. What's well, three quarters of fifteen? All right. And so you round that to twelve, and the twelfth number comes out to be fifty-two. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's five number summary. So when I ask you to calculate that, it's just all the quarters. Beginning of the game. Blah, 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 end of the game. And then to make the actual box plot, what kind of scale do I want? Where do you think we're going to start? I want to go from what to what? 29 to 63. So maybe start at 25, go by fives or tens, right? So 25, 35, 45, 55, 65. And this will be the fives component. So then you just start marking where these are. So 29 is right before 30. Ah, 40 is right at 40. 45 is at 45. That's amazing, Jeff. 52 is right above 50. Bam. And then 63 is right before 65. Bam. Your scale has got to be consistent. You can't say... 25, 35, 38, 60, right? Then your step size is all changing. It's not good. That's being deceitful. Box off the middle three. Add in your whiskers. Kabam. So that's the one I didn't have on the key, just because I ran out of room. The key major. Did you put that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So once you look through that, let me know if there's anything else you want to try, uh, if you want to do. But I'm going to do a... Uh, I'm going to ask myself a question. Jeff, can you do a standard deviation problem? Yes, because then I want to show you. I don't think I did show you how to just get the calculator to spit it out at us so you can check your work. Did I? No. So does that sound like something you want to know how to do? Oh, hell yeah. Uh, anybody need to borrow a calculator? If you want to. You know what to do. Yeah. stayed logged in, I can do all kinds of stuff. Anyway. There it is. 
All right, so let me make up some data up here. Go ahead and put this data into, actually, well, let's see how much of, that's not too bad. Let's do this. Let's do the data that's on problem number one. Go ahead and put that data into list one in your calculator. No need to sort. Oh, cool. Aw, oh, poor little dude. Da, 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 da. Okay, so let me catch up to you guys uh, later. Leave me alone. Let's do the wrong one. There we go. No, Jeff. to God. It's always nice. Just take a quick second. Do you see how I'm on the 16th spot? Which is fine because that means there's 15 numbers. So thank God. Right. So sucks to put in like 80 numbers and then only have 79. Like, oh shit, which one did I miss? I understand that. Um, I'm not going to do the normal stuff here. That's all on the practice test answer key. You've got to do that. Here's how you check yourself. I'm going to start singing, but I won't. Stat. That's how I put data in, right? But now I've got the data in. I want the calculator to do some shit. I paid so much money for this thing. Uh, I didn't really because I'm a teacher. Ah, but go to calc so I can calculate something. And how many... Now, I've asked this kind of question before, but how many variables did we just put in? Not how many values. How many variables? One. One variable that had 15 values. Are you with me? In fact, I use one list. So it's one variable. So what am I going to use? 